Snowfall is from where? From clouds. Clouds is from where? Condensation. Condensation is due to what? Evaporation. Evaporation is caused by what? Sun. So, be it running water or glacier, which is the ultimate source of energy. You understand that? And look here. When we talk about exogenic forces or exogenetic forces, if endogenetic forces originate in the Earth's interior, where do exogenetic forces originate? In the Earth's atmosphere. Do you understand that? And let me give you the examples of exogenetic forces. In sab ka kaam kya hai? Landform ko destroy karna. You understand that? Now, what are these forces? First, running water. Second, glacier. Third, wind. Fourth, underground water. Sometimes it's also referred to as subsurface water. And the fifth one is sea waves. Big cheese. Sabse bada representation running water ka jo surface pe hai, that is the river. Do you understand that? So sometimes this can also be written as river. Ab dekho, aapko ek technical naam bata raho mein river ke liye geography mein. It is known as fluve. So, what is riverine is actually fluvial. You understand that? So, look here very carefully. Running water. Suppose there is a landfall. And if there is rainfall over it, so clouds will cause the rainfall. So, if there is rainfall, you can understand that it would generate some streamlet, small streams. Now, if these streams, they start moving across the slopes with time, you can understand they would destroy the landfall and they would create a plane surface because exogenetic forces are what? Level us? Got that thing? Now this running water is the ultimate source of energy kya hai? Ye bana kaise? Can I say it is because of the sun? Why? Because sun caused evaporation. Evaporation caused clouds. Clouds caused rainfall. And rainfall caused the running water. So ultimate source of energy is what? Sun. If we sunny, hata de, kuch bhi nahi hoga. Got that thing? Now look at glacier. What is a glacier? A glacier is a solid body of ice, three-dimensional body of ice. And glaciers, they creep down a slope. They start moving down a slope. And this creeping is dependent upon the gradient. Because gradient has a direct relationship with gravity. Do you get that? So as the glacier comes down, hurling down. Now think of this. Glacier, as it moves down, then you can understand it has a weight of its own. So as it moves down, it scoops some of the material out of the slope. And in that way, it eats up the slope with the passage of time. And thus reduces the slope over a period of time. Do you understand that? Now, how this, this glacier was formed? Due to snowfall. Snowfall is from where? From clouds. Clouds is from where? Condensation. Condensation is due to what? Evaporation. Evaporation is caused by what? Sun. So, be it running water or glacier, which is the ultimate source of energy. You understand that? Now, wind. What is wind? We all know since our childhood that the horizontal movement of air is known as wind. And wind always blows from high pressure to low pressure. And you know, wherever temperature is high, the pressure is low. And wherever temperature is low, pressure is high. So, if we have high pressure somewhere, what kind of temperature we have there? Low temperature. If we have low pressure somewhere, what kind of temperature we have there? High temperature, generally. That's why over the summer season, the, temper the pressure that is developed is low pressure. Whereas in winter season, the pressure that is developed is high pressure. Kya se ye hota hai, ye hum samjhenge when we'll go to atmosphere related classes. But abhi ke liye itni understanding kaafi hai. Aur ye to general understanding aapko pata bhi hai. Now you know that high pressure air always moves from high pressure to low pressure. And the horizontal movement of air is known as wind. Do you get that? Now wind, though this looks very innocuous or harmless, 
बट विंड कैन ऑल्सो बी डेंजरस ऐसे सोच के देखो दैट देर इज अ माउंटेन थिंक ऑफ दिस देर इज अ माउंटेन एंड देर इज विंड विच इज स्प्लैशिंग अराउंड दिस माउंटेन टाइम एंड अगेन now winds also carry with them fine dust particles now when these dust particles are thrown over the mountain slope over the years for millions and millions of years you can understand that that causes something which is known as sand blasting and thus this mountain can get eroded with the passage of time obviously running water can erode the things much faster than what wind can do but we cannot say that wind is not an erosive agent it is also an erosive agent do you get that so that is what is the power of wind and where the power of wind could be felt most where it is carrying maximum amount of dust particles and where wind can carry maximum amount of dust particles where there is no water on the surface to hold the particles or vegetation it means where deserts and deserts have dust storms which is nothing but wind which is having so much of dust in it that is dust storm Do you get that? So wind is third agent of erosion, and wind are created due to difference in pressure. Difference in pressure is created due to difference in temperature, and temperature is due to what? Sun. So be it running water, glacier, or the wind, the ultimate source of energy seems to be sun. Let's come to underground water. The underground water होता कैसे? जमीन के अंदर पानी आता कैसे? Now look here. There is a certain rock structure. and there is rainfall over it so some of the water would evaporate during the rainfall some of wood would flow across the surface and the rest of it would percolate into the surface and this percolation would be dependent upon the permeability and porosity of the rocks permeability or porosity ka fark kya hai permeability means ki rock mein koi crack hai ya nahi porosity matlab jo grains hai rock ke unme kitna gap hai Do you understand that? So the water will percolate, but after going to a certain depth, it might not be able to percolate further, and then it would start following or flowing horizontally, depending upon the slope. This is how underground water is generated. Now it is, after all, due to rainfall, and rainfall is due to sun. आपको देख रहा है यहाँ पे. So the ultimate source of energy here also seems to be sun. What about sea waves? Sea waves are what? sea waves are movement of water in wave like format across the ocean surface and how sea waves are generated due to the force of wind do you understand how wind is generated due to sun difference in pressure sea waves as the waves splash across the coastal areas they can break down the coastal rocks and in that way they can denude the surface there so sea waves also derive their ultimate energy from the sun you get that so exogenic forces are those forces which are responsible for the destruction of the landforms and they originate from the earth's atmosphere sun being the ultimate source of energy are you clear with that thing now these are agents of erosion these are known as agents of erosion or another name for them is geomorphic agents देखो जियो का मतलब तो आपको पता है ये अर्थ मॉर्फोलॉजी का मतलब क्या होता है या मॉर्फ का मतलब क्या होता है साइज या शेप शेप समझ लो किसी चीज का दैट इज मॉर्फोलॉजी लाइक किसी चीज का शेप नहीं होता तो हम कहते हैं इट्स ए मॉर्फस लाइक अमीबा इट्स ए मॉर्फस सो मॉर्फोलॉजी मतलब शेप तो अर्थ के फीचर्स का शेप बदल दे कौन है वो ये एजेंट्स हैं So you get that. So that's why they are known as agents of erosion or geomorphic agents. All of them are levelers. All of them are variability destroyers, not developers, right? अब देखो, इनके पीछे अपनी अपनी cycle of erosion है. जो running water के पीछे जो cycle of erosion है, that is known as the fluvial cycle of erosion. One of the strongest cycle of erosion. Clear? Cycle of erosion का मतलब क्या होता है? देखो, एक landform पहले उसकी हाइट बहुत ज्यादा होती है देन विद द पैसेज ऑफ टाइम इट्स हाइट रिड्यूसेस एंड देन व्हेन इट डाइज डाउन इट हाइड्स कंप्लीटली गोज अवे यू गेट दैट सो यू हैव यंग स्टेज यू हैव मैच्योर स्टेज यू हैव ओल्ड स्टेज ऑफ अ लैंडफॉर्म सो जो यंग लैंडफॉर्म्स होंगे दे वुड बी वेरी हाई सो हिमालय अगर आपने कभी सुना होगा मेनी बुक्स वुड कॉल देम यंग फोल्ड माउंटेन 
you get that because they are very high now you get that whereas the aravallis are old fold mountain because they are reducing in their height constantly more of that sometime later in the course the cycle of erosion which is generated by the glacier is known as the glacial cycle of erosion one which is generated by wind is known as the aeolian cycle of erosion best formed over the deserts one which is generated by the underground water is known as the karst cycle of erosion karst is actually dekho kaun se patthar jo hain wo sabse zyada susceptible honge to rain water solution dissolution limestone jo chune ka patthar hota hai wo bahut jaldi ghul jayega pani mein there is a region called karst region in erstwhile yugoslavia a country hua karti thi to wahan pe ye cycle bahut hi strongly developed hai that's why this cycle is known as the karst cycle of erosion are you aware about mother teresa she was from yugoslavia actually and the sea waves the erosion caused by the sea waves is known as the coastal cycle of erosion got it so these are the five cycles of erosion and these are the five geomorphic agents got it samajh mein aa gaya hai dekho jab bhi kisi destruction ki baat hogi to we will say it is geomorphic got it aur jab kisi creation ki baat hogi we will call it tectonic tectonic matlab creation geomorphic matlab destruction samajh mein aaya to tectonic forces means what kind of forces endogenetic forces whereas geomorphic forces means 